Hi, I'm Austin, and the first movie that I want to go over is um, Alexander Payne's 2013 movie, Nebraska. And in case you didn't know what Nebraska is, it's a place in America with land, lots and lots of land, land for children and for corn. To start off with how I found out about this movie, um, I recall two years ago, or one year, no, it was two years ago, I was in Sam's Club, and it was around the holiday season, so there was a there was a deal on Blu-ray movies, and usually when I buy Blu-ray movies, I buy critically acclaimed ones, so usually ones that win Oscars, because I feel like it's worth buying on Blu-ray, because it costs a little more, so I remember I picked up um, Birdman. And Forrest Gump, and usually Forrest Gump, I feel like should be in most uh, movie collections because it's just a classic. And then, so I was I was digging through these movies, and I was seeing a couple that I never noticed before. And most of the other ones that I've seen before were just blockbuster ones, just high budgeted ones that I never really kind of cared for. And um, so I came across um, Nebraska, and what actually drew my attention, because with usually with movie covers, you always have the the critics' lines on the front. What actually what drew my attention was um, was Alexander Payne, who directed this, and who has also directed Sideways, and I've really enjoyed Sideways. If you haven't seen it, that's definitely a movie to go check out. And uh, what what I really liked is that the paragraph on the movie is actually just simple. Is the the line on the movie is just rather just simple. It's just one paragraph because usually when you watch a movie, uh, when you when you look at the cover of the case of a movie, um, what I'm going to give an example of is uh, the 2005 War of the Worlds um, cover. You have the front, you have the top that says Steven Spielberg at his finest, which. Really, like, people even... I mean, it's not a forgotten movie, but it's not like somebody just talks about it um, into a film conversation out of nowhere. And, uh, I mean, explosive, nonstop action. And then, and then you have your first paragraph, which is just BS. I mean, look at it. It says, An earth-shattering adventure that both rivets and amazes by Michael Willington Chicago tribute. I don't care. War of the Worlds reunites superstar Tom Cruise and Academy Award-winning director Steven Spielberg. Uh, duh, he's Academy, Academy Award-winning. Like, I don't... Stop telling me shit I already know. For one of the most awe-inspiring and cinematic experiences of all time. I mean, I don't care. Sometimes I read this, I start reading that that BS paragraph, and I'm like, oh shit, I don't even have to read this. Like, I was trying. To, let me get to the actual information. But if you look in Nebraska, it it just nails it. it. Just nails it from Academy Award-winning Alexander Payne. You don't even know the name. It's not a household name. So okay, he's Academy Award winner, actually winner, not nominee. And then from the director of Sideways and Descendants, that's it. It comes to film critics are calling an American masterpiece. All right, that's kind of interesting. What a father, Bruce Dern. That's it. Doesn't say what movie he's in. Doesn't say if he won any rewards. Just Bruce Dern. And his adult son, Will Forte. That's it. Embark on a journey to claim a million dollar prize. And what begins as a fool's errand becomes a search um, for the road to redemption. Discover why Nebraska is the film that critics are calling damn near perfect. That's it. Short and simple. You hear about a million dollar prize. What here's as a fool's errand in search for a road to redemption. Like, that sounds interesting. That's just short. I want to find out more. Two things from this movie that can be a little drag before I start. And that's going to, it can, it might turn you off. Um, the first thing is kind of maybe just me, but um, I've watched it with my mom and she actually said the same thing. Is the music can kind of get, it can get uh, iterated. It just, you'll hear the same violin. Um, track just play kind of too often so it was almost as if they couldn't maybe come up with some more music or maybe play less of it to kind of fill in the tracks between some of the shots but the other thing is as you could tell by the cover it actually is in black and white now 
I don't really have a problem with black and white, but I actually know some people who love watching old movies, but will not watch some movies because it is in black and white. My stepdad, for instance, he loves cowboy movies, but he does not like who the man who shot Liberty Valance because that movie is in black and white. Now, if you can get past that, you can get through the story and actually find out it's a pretty it's a pretty interesting movie. I kind of respect the movies that are still doing this black and white thing. Um, I mean, that are coming out recently. I mean, for instance, you have Clerks, uh, the first Clerks. You have Sim City. I'm sorry, Sin City. Uh, then you have another one that I just can't think of on the tip of my tongue. One that's kind of like best picture worthy. Uh, I want to say it wasn't shit on with being claimed on the front of the box saying it's Spielberg's finest. Oh. It'll come to me. So one thing I want to go over when I talk about a movie are is the cast. Because I feel like um, I'm not going to talk about the whole cast. But I want to go over actors and certain actresses that that you might recognize and talk about what you might know most famously. So that way you're able to connect closer to whatever I'm talking about. So you got Bruce Stern playing as the basically the protagonist, Woody Grant. You might know him from Cowboy, mostly Western films. Uh, most commonly that I know him from is Hang Em High with Clint Eastwood and Cowboys with John Wayne. And then you have Will Forte, which you probably will know from uh, SNL if you watch SNL uh, recently. I will always know Will Forte from having a piece of celery up his ass from McGruber. Why did it have to be celery? Uh, I mean, can he just choose another vegetable? Oh, we got some sliced carrots. Okay, never mind. Yeah, that. Oh god, yeah, it's all chopped up and shit. No, no. some mustard greens. It's all sliced. No, uh, nope. A uh, whole or French style green bean. Well, now that I think about it, both slime. <laughs> okay, corn, cream. Oh, he's like, Jesus Christ, cream style? You don't have no regular corn? No, that's not going up there. And then you got mushroom stems. And, oh, no. Nope. Nope. No, what was I thinking? Nope, this was a horrible idea. No, you look. And this, was, this was a bad idea. I don't know what we got. Sweet peas? <laughs> They're gross, let alone having to have them up your ass. I'll be finding loose shit peas in my underwear for months. And you have Bob Odenkirk, which you'll probably recognize him from Better Call Saul. And then you have Devin Rotrave, which I will always know him as the uh, as the older brother in the Home Alone movies. So I can familiarize with this movie a bit because I grew up in a in a small town called Vernon that's in the middle of nowhere in Michigan. And uh, I mean, there were, it's full of old people, and it's just fields and fields of just just countryside, and. I mean, it takes 15 minutes to get to the nearest Walmart, and not even on the highway. I mean, it's straight back roads. Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! I want all of you to look at it! But if you can't familiarize with that, there are... Um, it's almost... If I can describe this movie, it almost feels like you you went to an old person's house, like your, your grandparents' house or somebody in that nature, and you just sat there, and you're like... You're like, I'm stuck here, or time just feels a lot slower. Now, the, I know that may seem kind of bad, but this the story is actually quite interesting. If you can get past the black and white, it's actually quite interesting. Um, because uh, this movie starts out, you have Bruce Stern as uh, Woody, and you have his son, played by Will Forte. And he, he finds out that he wins this million-dollar sweepstake. And obviously it's fake. He's not going to win a million dollars, but he believes it. It's just something about he. It's just something about it. He, you know, he's old. He's he's really believes that he's going to get a million dollars. So he's he doesn't have his license. So he just keeps walking and just keeps walking. And his son just keeps finding him. He says, "Dad, you are not going all the way down to Lincoln, Nebraska. Mind you, they are in South or North Dakota." So what happens is that his mom sees it as, and you'll see that the mom is actually Kate. She is hilarious. She's kind of the comic relief. You never know what is going to come out of her mouth next. See what you could have had, Keith, if you hadn't talked about weed all the time? So they decide, since he has family in Nebraska, that they 
so she decides, okay, why don't you just go take him down there? So so they so they take a trip. And it ends up being one of those journeys where it's kind of kind of like the son just decides, well, let me let me spend some time with my dad. You know, he doesn't have much time left. So it's it's funny to see this movie. It actually feels like you're taking a trip with them. You actually feel like you're in the car, and then you take the trip with them to Nebraska because you start to actually discover more about Woody and more about the family, and more about the town that he grew up in and his history and everything. And so it almost feels like you went with them and then you're just hearing all the stuff. And what better way to hear about a character or an actual person's story than the place that they grew up with, with the people that they grew up with. And it's pretty, it's pretty good. (laughs) And uh, now what's funny is that you can really see how his character is just his character alone in, in the situation that he in, that he's in draws this giant plot in, in this interesting plot to where this entire town since he he you find out that he's a drunk in this entire town makes something out of nothing just because of him just because of the fact that oh wow he's got a million dollars well i remember when he was drunk you know we, he could, we took care of him and everything how about some money and it, it realizes it has this drama, but it has this sense of humor that that fights back with the drama. That it's just you can't help but laugh, but feel sympathy at the same time. And and that's and that's how we can tell um, the work of Alexander Payne because that's exactly how Sideways was. One thing that keeps this movie interesting is that they they always ask him, "What are you gonna buy when you get your million dollars?" And and he just says, "Oh, we'll get a truck and an air compressor." And it's funny how that ties in with the ending because just the ending is just so beautiful. The way that this whole movie is is this, is this effective story that you can I can kind of see just summing the whole movie up and just telling it as like a cute bedtime story. Um, just the way now what what leads up to the ending? You're probably thinking it's kind of dragging. It, it's you're like thinking it's it's an okay movie. But then it just has one of those endings that just really pay off. It just turns the whole movie into just amazing. And you, you'll, after watching it, you'll feel good. You'll feel great about the ending and about all the characters. And you're just thinking, man, just it just hits you like a ton of bricks. Like, you just feel warm-hearted. So, with this movie, um, not to say... I give it a rating, a review, a rating, because you already know I like it. Um, The only question is if you like it. So the only thing I can say is have a beer with your own man and be somebody when you watch this.